bestbookbits.com brings you Your Faith is Your Fortune by Neville Goddard. Your Faith is Your Fortune is a powerful and inspiring work by Neville Goddard, a mystic, philosopher, and believer in the law of attraction. Goddard was a prolific author and wrote many works on the theory of manifestation through feeling. Goddard's theories have a profound influence on generations of mystics and students of metaphysics and guide the work of such authors as Wayne Dyer. In Your Faith is Your Fortune, Goddard presents a new and modern interpretation of the Bible in a great humor drama, full of psychological challenges experienced by people for thousands of years. These dramas continue to contain important lessons for people to this day, and everyone may find a representation of themselves in its pages. Goddard argued that the symbolism of the Bible is timeless, and once a person is able to understand the connection of the symbolism to their own life, then they can understand one of life's most important lessons. God, creator of heaven and earth, is man's awareness of his own being. Your Faith is Your Fortune endures as a thought-provoking work on God, spirituality, and self-awareness. On with the book summary. The unconditioned awareness of being becomes conditioned by imagining itself to be something and becomes that which it had imagined itself to be, which is how creation begins. All things evolve out of nothing through the process of first conceiving and then becoming that which is conceived. The formless awareness of being is also known as I am, is in the internal no-thingness that contains the capacity to be all things and is the source of all conceptions of self. I am is the law of being and transcends all conceptions of itself by believing itself to be that which does transcend. Man has the power to decree a thing and it will come to pass because every man automatically expresses that which he is conscious of being. The Bible is a psychological drama representing the consciousness of man and God, or the awareness of being, which is revealed throughout its literature. To be conscious of being something is to express and bring it into manifestation. Man's awareness of being is always expressing itself and manifesting itself in the world. Man's level of consciousness determines what he expresses and manifests in the world. Man can leave his level of consciousness and therefore change what he expresses and manifests in the world through the power of assumption. The truth that sets people free is the knowledge that their consciousness is the resurrection and the life, and their consciousness both resurrects and makes alive all that they are conscious of being. The consciousness of being is not dependent on being anything, and it preceded all conceptions of itself, and shall be when all conceptions of itself cease to be. To rise in consciousness to the level of the thing desired, and to remain there until that level becomes one's nature, is the way of all seeming miracles. Man always draws into his world that which he is conscious of being. To be reborn, one must drop their current level of consciousness and rise to the level they desire to express and possess. People cannot serve two opposing states of consciousness at the same time and must choose which one to focus on. People often lack faith in the simple law of acquiring the consciousness of the thing they desire because they look at the desired state through the consciousness of their present limitations. To change one's circumstances, one must first change their consciousness. The truth is that consciousness is the only reality and that everything else is a product of consciousness. To change one's circumstances, one must first change their words and actions to align with their desired state. Many people are misled by seeking guidance and direction from the pseudo-teachers and schools that promise initiation into the mysteries. These students will eventually become disillusioned and realize that the only true master is the I am within themselves. The only ascension that happens is rising from one level of consciousness to another. And this is accomplished by claiming and believing that one is expressing a certain level of consciousness. The only master is the consciousness within oneself 
and this master is limitless and eternal. The only way to enlightenment is to turn away from the human substitutions and idol worship and find the truth within oneself. When people give up on their belief in a God separate from themselves and recognize their awareness of being as God, like Jesus and the prophets did, they will transform the world and the realization that I and my Father are one, but my Father's is greater than I. The consciousness of being is non-dependent on being anything and preceded all conceptions of itself and will continue to exist even when all conceptions of itself cease to be. Jesus discovered the truth that his consciousness was God and that he was conscious of being the Son bearing witness to God, the Father. To rise in consciousness to the level of the thing designed and remain there until it becomes one's nature is the way to accomplish seeming miracles. No man can come to Jesus except the Father within him draws him, and Jesus and the Father are one. If someone is unhappy with their current expression of life, they must be born again or drop their current level of consciousness and rise to the level they desire to express and possess. One cannot serve two masters or opposing states of consciousness at the same time. Man often lacks faith in the simple law of expressing what they desire by acquiring the consciousness of it because they look at the desired state through the consciousness of their present limitations. There is only one master, which is God, or the I am within itself. The understanding of God is either incorrect or there is something wrong with how man teaches about God. To pure people, all things are pure. Man's consciousness is the only reality and objectified things are different states of consciousness. Man's conception of himself determines what he sees in the world. All things are made by God and of God. God is one and commands himself to be seeming other because there is no other. To command effectively, one must command oneself to be what one wants to appear. God is present in everyone's consciousness and one can become conscious of God by identifying with their consciousness. To change one's manifestation, one must change their conception of themselves. To understand and experience the truth, one must turn their attention inward and become conscious of their true self. The belief in powers outside oneself will prevent one from recognizing one's power. Belief in external things give those things power while taking power away from oneself. The kingdom of heaven can only be entered when one is relieved of false beliefs. All outward appearances are simply externalized states of mind. Forgiveness is necessary because all people are expressing what they believe themselves to be. Claiming oneself to be what one desire can bring about the change and freedom. The power within oneself is greater than any external power. The true self is identified as I am and recognizing this allows one to overcome any obstacle. Belief in powers outside of oneself, whether for good or evil, becomes the mold of the graven image worshipped. The belief in external things like drugs or money are the values that must be thrown out in order to manifest true qualities. Man-made laws, opinions and beliefs do not have real authority. All outward appearances are states of mind externalized. Forgiveness of others is necessary because they are expressing what they are conscious of being. The foundation of expression is consciousness. The world is a reflection of one's consciousness objectified. Changing one's conception of oneself is the key to changing the reflection in the world. The feeling of satisfaction or fulfillment in response to a self-question is the father's state of consciousness, the foundation upon which change is built. This feeling may take a moment or a year to become properly conditioned and integrated. It's important to follow the teachings of Jesus and not look back on one's problems. 
In order to manifest change, one must first feel the change in the present moment. The law of the universe is that man receives multiple, a hundredfold that which he is aware of being, and all things gravitate to that consciousness with which they are in tune. The virgin of birth of Jesus is a psychological drama symbolizing the potential for man to give birth to new ideas without the need for external help or resources. The story of the three wise men represents the threefold nature of man, body, mind, and spirit, and the gifts they bring represent the three aspects of consciousness, love, wisdom, and power. The story of the birth of Jesus in a manga symbolizes the potential for man to give birth to new ideas in humble and unassuming circumstances. The story of the shepherds visiting the newborn Jesus represents the idea that the message of Christ is for all people, regardless of their social status. The Christmas story as a whole represents the potential for man to give birth to new ideas and to recognize and express the Christ consciousness within himself. The birth of Jesus symbolizes the moment when a person discovers their consciousness to be the source of their world and the source of their self-expression. Christmas is celebrated on December 25th because it represents a time when a person discovers their true self and begins to claim and define themselves as they desire to be. The resurrection and the crucifixion are not fixed dates and are not about the death and resurrection of a physical person, but rather symbolize the movement of the sun and the moon and how they affect a person's consciousness. The resurrection occurs when a person discovers their true identity as their consciousness and the crucifixion occurs when they let go of their false identity and the limitations it imposes on them. The resurrection and the crucifixion are ongoing processes and can be experienced multiple times throughout a person's life. The resurrection is the moment when a person realizes their true identity and the limitless potential it brings, while the crucifixion is the moment when they let go of their false identity and the limitations it imposes on them. Determining desires by need allows for the automatic fulfillment of those needs. Every desire is the knock of the saviour at the door of consciousness. Physical circumcision is not related to spiritual circumcision, which is the removal of the veil that hides the head of creation, awareness of being. To perform spiritual circumcision, one must cut away the adhesions of race, nationality, and family, and recognize that in Christ there is no distinction between these identities. The spiritual act of circumcision allows for the revelation of the eternal self or the awareness of being. To perform this act, one must be willing to let go of the old self and all attachments to the material world. The reward for performing this act is the realization of the Christ self and the attainment of eternal life. Man's consciousness is the sun of his life, radiating images on the screen of space that are projections of his inner light. When a man discovers his consciousness to be God, he becomes the sun in its northern passage, stimulating hidden desires and ambitions into birth. The mystery of the crucifixion and resurrection is symbolized in the rituals of Good Friday and Easter, which represent the sun's passage across the equator. Circumcision is the operation that removes the veil that hides the head of creation, the unconditioned awareness of being, called God. The Trinity of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit represents the receptive, pressing, and expressive aspects of God's unconditioned awareness. Man's prayers are only answered when he assumes the consciousness of the thing desired and appropriates it through fixation and feeling. The twelve disciples represent the twelve qualities of mind that can be controlled and disciplined by man, including hearing, faith, and understanding. The first day of the week, Sunday, represents the day of resurrection and the realization of defined desires. The three days between Wednesday and Sunday represent the interval between the conception of an idea and its realization. The two thieves on the cross represent the negative and positive aspects of man's consciousness, with the negative being crucified and the positive 
been resurrected. Born again means to detach from one's current conception of oneself and assume the consciousness of that which one desires to be. Judas, often thought as a traitor, represents the act of detachment from one's current self-conception. The world is an ocean of liquid light containing all things, including man, as bodies within itself. The story of the flood in the Bible represents man's current state of being, inundated in an ocean of light. Man's ideas or doves can find dry land or realization when he becomes fully identified with his desire. The world is made of crystallized liquid light, with different expressions of velocities of this substance resulting from the conceiver's desire to know themselves. The breath of life is the internal velocity of the universe, and the physical death is the sensation of this velocity. The body is a machine that can be kept in good working order through correct thinking and the realization of one's desires. The resurrection of the body is the realization of one's desires and the embodiment of them. One must enter a new state of consciousness to create a new heaven and a new earth. In order to manifest one's desires, they must be sought in consciousness and claimed and appropriated. To catch big fish manifestations, one must enter deeper and freer states of consciousness. To fish successfully, one must decide what they want, remove their attention from the problem, and place it on just being, then claim and feel themselves to have their desired manifestation. The conviction that one has manifested their desire is signaled by a feeling of expansion. To maintain the manifestation, one must continue to feel and claim it is as their own, and not allow doubts or negative thoughts to enter their consciousness. The consciousness realization and embodiment of one's desires will lead to the resurrection of one's body. The story of Count on Monte Cristo by Dumas is the biography of every man. The story follows the character Edmund Dantes, a young sailor who finds the captain of his ship dead and takes command of the ship during a storm. Dantes is arrested and imprisoned in the catacombs by three men who fear change and wish to maintain their position in the government. Dante's discovery, an old priest who has been imprisoned for an unknown amount of time, and the old priest instructs Dante in the mysteries of life and helps him escape. The old priest dies and Dante uses the knowledge and wealth he has gained, sets out to seek revenge on those who had wronged him. Dante becomes the Count of Monte Cristo and eventually achieves his revenge, but realizes the emptiness of his actions and returns to his true identity as a divine being. The process of creation begins when a person contemplates being and possesses what they desire. When a person feels and claims to be what they formerly desired to be, the desire passes and is realized. The receptive attitude of the mind is the fertile ground for the seed to find objective to grow. The seed grows into the likeness of the person from whom it was pressed. The consciousness state in which a person lives is the mother of their children, and the visible world is a reflection of that state. The mystic carefully selects their conscious state and claims to be their highest ideal. Jesus went to the garden with his disciples, disciplined mind to lose himself in joy and press out the seeds of his desire. To press out seeds, a person must feel and claim to be the thing designed with a joy that is beyond their wildest dreams. The pressed out seeds will grow and mature, eventually expressing conditions in the person's environment. The mystic remains faithful to their divine the mystic remains faithful to their defined objective by defining and claiming to be what they desire to express. That's wrap right on this book summary, Your Faith is Your Fortune by Neville Goddard. Check us out at bestbookbits.com. We've done over a thousand book summaries in video, written, and audio format. We've got books, ebooks. We do coaching and consulting as well. Um, so please check us out there. Thank you for watching and listening, and stay tuned for more summaries to come. Take care. Bye-bye now.